The guys who left the portal gathered near the building of their initial gathering, where the test began. The students looked tired and rumpled. Someone has already managed to provide medical assistance by making bandages and putting a cast on, and someone still comes in a state of shock, sitting on the ground and trying to recover. Dense haze interferes with electromagnetic waves. So the question of maintaining communication during tests within the haze was quite acute at first. As a result of testing various communication methods, flares began to be used in such sectors. It is recommended to launch flares from the maximum available high point so as not to fall into higher buildings. Therefore, everyone did not immediately find out about the attack on the students and now everyone is waiting for those who still remained on the other side, unable to contact them. And Zhu and Zhu Y are standing in suspense. They are worried that Hanzai has not yet come out of the portal. Zhu looks out for her new friend, but sees nothing but fog. Here a figure can be seen through the two man, and then the man himself who comes out of it. Coming out of the fog turns out to be Hanzai and Doggy walking merrily next to him. Hanzai smiles and tells his comrades if they were looking for him, and they happily brighten up and run up to him. Ziu Y comes close and starts hugging Hanzai, telling him that he has finally returned, because Ziu Y would have died from such a long experience, remembering what happened on the other side. And Zhu first looks at Hanzai and notices that his wounds have already healed, although they were quite serious. She picks up the puppy and examines it, noting that the dog is also in perfect order. There is not a single scratch on it, and besides, it looks as if it has been corrected in such a short time. Did Doggy have a level increase? Zhu Y approaches the girl and the puppy, from which the second begins to bark furiously, because he still does not recognize Zhu Y as his new friend. And Zhu turns to Han Zai and asks him about what happened after they ran away and what happened to the man who was wearing a black cloak. Han Zai's expression changes and he says that the Cretan is dead. Hearing this, Zhu Y approaches Han Zai and enthusiastically says how cool he is. But the young man asks his friend to be quiet so that no one hears their conversation and finds out about Han Zai's little secret. He hugs his friends and asks them not to spread about what happened. And he also asks them not to talk about the fact that Doggy's level has increased. Ziu Y says that they will keep their mouths shut. They will be dumb as fish, so Han Zai can be calm, because his secret will remain only with them. At this time, the rector of the university is extremely angry. He is sitting at a round table with other co-workers of the educational institution and says that what happened does not fit into any gates. The damn sectarians have lost their minds in the edge, since they allow themselves to interrupt the test and attack students. Teacher Wang tells the rector that it is worth paying attention to the fact that the place of the test was kept in the strictest secrecy, and no outsider could find out about it. So there is a version that there is someone in the academy or the combat brigade belonging to the sect and spying on its interests. The rector, after listening to Van's version, asks about what ideas the security service puts forward in this case. He is told that it is necessary to conduct an investigation, at least to interview all the new students who were attacked, what they saw. Plus, the interrogation should be conducted among the commanders of the detachments. An incredible number of people gathered near the academy who heard about what happened at the test. A bunch of reporters are waiting for students to show up to interview them. The first one they catch turns out to be Han Zai. The red-haired reporter girl tell him that they are here to ask a few questions about their first test. The girl turns out to be a member of the student union, which acts on the instructions of the rector, who authorized her to interview students who were at the very epicenter and were attacked. He asks Han Zai and the comrades who came up to him to follow her. They enter the auditorium, where some of the students are already sitting, who, seeing Han Zai, began to whisper because they heard a rumor that during the test the young man stood out for his decent behavior. They begin to share information about Han Zai with each other. Someone remembers that when he was rescuing students, he defeated a second-level crystal eater with his own hands. Some, hearing this, were imbued with respect for the young man, while others considered it nonsense, because Han Zai is an ordinary nerd who got a tiny shepherd dog from which there is no benefit. Some students from the combat faculty laugh at the fact that someone believes in the words about the feet of Han Zai. They say that if this were true, then he would have been able to put the behemoth Wang Kai in a Sikundu. These words are answered by another young man who says that if it weren't for Han Zai, they wouldn't be here. Han personally saved more than 20 people, including this young man. The guy says that if someone else says at least one crooked word to Han Zai, he will personally work for the one who speaks so frivolously and disrespectfully about the person who sacrificed himself to save students. Ziu Y looks at the person who spoke badly about Han Zai, preparing to also get into a conversation, but Han Zai puts his arm around his shoulder and says that everything is fine and it's not worth paying attention to such narrow-minded people. The trio approaches the last desk and decides to sit down at it. A red-haired girl from the council approaches Han Zai sitting at his desk, 
winks at him and bends down, opening her eyes to her bust. She smiles flirtatiously and asks the guy if he can help them with the investigation. Embarrassed, Hanzai blushes and says that he will try to be as helpful as possible. The girl leaning on the desk starts asking him. She says that their three-man squad detained a man in a black cloak and his snake, which allowed two dozen people to escape. Hanzai scratches the back of his head and says that they just heard calls for help and came to help. They themselves were lucky that they managed to escape from the threat and escape. The girl bends even closer to the guy and asks him about how he was able to fight back against the second-level crystal eaters and Hanzai answers her, saying that even though they look big and dangerous, but in fact they are weak and cowardly, so he just gave them a couple of times in the muzzles and they immediately broke up. Huddled, he didn't do anything impossible. The redhead straightens up and folds her arms on her chest, looking at Hanzai in such a way that he would understand that she does not believe his words because they look like nonsense. Bankine appears in the audience, accompanied by his henchmen. He looks haughtily at the students and says that he heard how the students of the logistics faculty were severely beaten. He did not think that so many of these weaklings survived. He says they are such weaklings that they were looked after by security officers, and then they even intervened in the trial to help them. Their ordeal was like an amusement park, not something complicated. Wang Kine approaches Han Zai and tells him that he is worthless as a flea, but his luck can be envy. Han Zai listens to him in silence without showing any interest in Wang's words. Van says that he is just a pathetic nerd, but his tirade of humiliations is stopped by a red-haired girl throwing a chair at him, from which she turns away. She tells him that if he was assigned to the combat faculty, this does not mean that he has the right to do what he wants and say. So far, Van Kine is nothing, so let him keep quiet in a rack. Van, frightened of the girl, awkwardly scratches his cheek and tells her not to boil so much, but she does not listen to him and tells them to leave the audience. Van Kine is unhappy with this, but he really leaves the audience. In the corridor, his friends ask if he is ready to leave everything like this, but Van Kine stops and hits the wall, leaving a crack in it. He turns to his henchmen and tells them not to tell anyone about what happened in the audience. Zui tells Nzu that a red-haired girl is sexier in anger than when she is calm. She approaches Han Zai and asks him to continue the conversation. The young man smiles and says that he has already told everything he knew, so he does not think that he can help with anything else. The girl goes behind him, puts her hands on his shoulders and bends down. She tells him in his ear that he has nothing to be afraid of, because she does not bite and only wants to help. She tells Han Zai that he performed well on the test, in connection with which she consulted with some members of the student union, and she wants to recommend Han Zai to join them. Hearing this, the young man was surprised, because joining the student union has its advantages, opens access to additional training resources, there is an opportunity to receive rewards, and most importantly, it is an additional feed for Doggy. Han Zai tells the girl that he needs to think a little and she says with a smile that she will wait for his answer. But it's not worth delaying the decision, because not everyone receives such an offer. She says goodbye to Han Zai and tells him to go to rest. The test results will be published tomorrow, so today you can relax. The next morning, students find a table with test results next to it. They crowd around her to find their name and find out the place they have taken. Han Zai and Nzu are sitting on a bench and waiting for Zhu Wai to come, who went to see their results. The guy is standing near the board and looking for his friends. He finds Nzu, who took 5th place and scored 430 points. Those standing in the crowd were very surprised, because someone from the faculty of logics turned out to be in the top 5, from which the guys from this faculty sincerely begin to rejoice. Van Kine appears behind them, who says that the 5th place is their ceiling and if they are happy about it, then they are weaklings and scum. In 4th place is Zhu Wai, who scored 460 points. Wang Kai and hearing this starts to get angry and pushing the crowd climbs forward to find out who is in 3 places. He is in third place, having scored 567 points. Wang Kai is extremely dissatisfied with this result. In second place is Zhang Zionin, the girl with the flower, who scored 593 points. Everyone held their breath, because everyone wants to find out who was the first. In the first place is Han Zai, who scored 2,100 points. The fact that Han Zai took the first place caused a shock to absolutely all students, because he scored the most points. People begin to discuss this information violently because such information has become extremely unexpected for everyone. Someone says that this is incredible, because the students from the logistics faculty beat the students of the combat faculty, and even took three places in the top five. Maybe Han Zai somehow skillfully chose weak mutants of the second and third level and that's why he scored so many points. But this version is dismissed, because there are no weak mutants of the second and third level. 
Only the people of the mist are weaker than them, but they are given only one point for each. Hanzai couldn't have killed more than 2,000 people of the mist in a few hours. Wang Kine is furious, because why on earth is Hanzai, a weak nerd, in the first place? How could he get around it, really thanks to his useless puppy? Wang believes that Hanzai Kai Taro, so he was able to bypass him. Ziyu Wai says their Hanzai scored four times more points than Wang Kine. It turns out that if Han Zai, according to Wang Kine, is garbage, it means that he is four times worse than this garbage. Ziyu Wai's words infuriate Wang Kine even more, so he grabs Ziyu's breasts and furiously asks how he dared to say such a thing about him. Everyone in the faculty room is also in shock. Liu Jianwu, the dean of the combat faculty, cannot believe that the first place was taken by someone from the logistics faculty. Bai Dankyu, the supervisor of the faculty of logistics, says that she was also very surprised. Apparently, she was lucky with the students this year. The curators discuss this situation, asking whether the security service has confirmed the test results. Bai says that all the results have been confirmed and even the rector was worried about this news. At the academy, the curators of the groups are most engaged in students. Due to the lack of human resources, most of the teaching staff join the auxiliary detachments of combat brigades, and the responsibility for nurturing new generations of contactors fell on the shoulders of a few teachers. Most of the subjects are taught by group curators. Above the curators are the deans, who are in charge of the faculty. They are engaged in the development of teaching methods and personal supervision of those students who are considered the most gifted. Then a student from the logistics faculty flies into the office, who quickly tells the curator by that hands eye from their group is going to fight with a student from the combat faculty in the courtyard. So he ran to them to help stop the brewing fight. Hearing this, the curators rise up and Liu Jianwu thinks that the guy has serious inclinations, so he should also look at him. Wang Kang holds Zhu Wai with his fist raised to strike. Wang Kian's fist stops Han Zai a few centimeters away from his friend and tells Wang to get behind him. Wang Kajing says that he is lagging behind Ziyu Wai, but only in order to teach Han Zai a good lesson. Wang swings and runs at Han Zai, who dodges and hits him in the solar plexus with his knee. Wang Kian moves away from Han Zai and furiously shouts to him that the rocking chair will not save him and calls for a runner, ordering him to grab Han Zai. And Zhu watches this skirmish with horror in his eyes, realizing that Wang Kian wants to kill Han Zai. Han Zai looks at Wang Kai and tells Tom that since he decided to use his beast in their fight, he will end up without it. The aura of Doggy envelops Han Zai, who is preparing to strike at the behemoth, but he is stopped by the curators who came running to separate them. Curator Bai says that dueling is prohibited on the territory of the academy. Ziyu Wai tells the curator that Wang Kajing started this skirmish. If not for his short temper, this would not have happened. Another pre-feeder asks Van Kine what happened. Wang Kine says that he demands a public explanation of the test results, because Han Zai clearly cheated and violated the rules. His contract beast is a useless little shepherd dog. How could he score 21 points? His puppy is a worthless combat assistant. It is surprising that this puppy survived at all. He believes that he was helped by the staff of the No Danger Service and everything was arranged so that Han Zai took the first place. Ziyu Wai loses his temper and comes close to Wang Kian's friend, saying that he does not even know what the students have passed on the other side, because they have no idea what an invasion of animals is. Curator Bai says to calm everyone down, she will be happy to share with you the details of the results. He says that as many of the students present know that students from the Faculty of Logistics and some others were attacked by animals. As a result of the invasion, out of eight security service employees, one is now in critical condition, three are in serious condition due to injuries. And Han Zai himself killed several hundred mutants, saved more than 20 students, repelled the attack of three second-level crystal eaters, and he also helped a security officer defeat the instigator of this invasion. This information was confirmed by both the security service and the curators from the academy. The test results are fair. There were no handouts. The students, after listening to all this, exhale in amazement. Someone in the crowd shouts that Han Zai is the best, that from now on he will be an idol. One of the students also says that he heard about a dozen students of the combat faculty lost a fight to a second-level mutant and ran away, but Han Zai drove three of them alone. Van Kine does not believe in this, believing that everything said is nonsense and nonsense. Curator Bai turns to Han Zai, smiles at him and congratulates him on his well-deserved first place, because he did a good job. But she also asks him not to violate the rules of staying in the academy in the future. The young man smiles at her and says that he will try to be a diligent student. Bai says that she will now go to the dean of the faculty of logistics to clarify about the award that Han Zai should have. Liu Jianwu approaches them, who decided to get acquainted with Han Zai. He says that he will not beat around the bush, so immediately, without unnecessary preludes, offers him to transfer to the combat faculty. 
He says that if the guy agrees, he will personally mentor him and share with him the secrets of the development of both the guy and doggy. And he will also teach a complex of combat techniques that he developed himself. Here another old man appears on the field, who says that Liu should not ruin Han Zai's talent, because he deserves better. This old man turned out to be Zhang Zi, the dean of the research faculty. He says that Han Zai's former teacher approached him with a request to enroll the pair in the research faculty, so Liu should stand in the horses of the queue. Zhang Zi approaches Han Zai and says that if he transfers to his faculty, he will be able to get the most effective drugs in any quantity. This will open an unprecedented window of opportunity for him. The old men begin to almost fight against the young man, but then the curator Bai appears, who furiously says that both old men are too impudent because right in front of her eyes they are trying to take her student away. She hugs Han Zai and says that the logistics department has outstanding students, which is a rarity, so she won't give Han Zai up without a fight. She tells the guy that if he really wants to transfer to another faculty, she will understand him and will respect his choice. Han Zai says that he has thought everything over and likes the logistics department, he does not want to be transferred anywhere. The guy says that he is very grateful for the suggestions, but he is satisfied with the faculty of logistics. In the end, no matter where he studies, he will try to be useful for the supporting city anyway, and this is much more important than the struggle for faculties. The old people smile and say that he is an extremely curious guy. Bang Kine is not happy with such increased attention towards his main Tibetan enemy, but his supervisor asks him to calm down and not be discouraged. He says that Van Kine has an AA rank magical beast that can be upgraded to SS rank. Right now, Han Zai is riding out at the expense of physical skills, but after a while it won't matter so much. At a higher level, Han Zai has no chance to forgive Wang Kine. Wang Kine says that Han Zai has made a mockery of their faculty, to which the curator tells him that this is why Wang should train hard. Elimination competitions will be held very soon. If during these competitions Wang Kine wins over Han Zai, then the shame of the cult will be washed away. Curator Bai and the deans enter the office located within the walls of the university. Liu Jianwu tells the woman that their faculty was lucky and they got a very gifted student. The dean of the military faculty asks her how they could get such a student as Han Zai and she replies that it's luck and that's all. They follow the office and stumble upon the rector, who is in an extremely dissatisfied state. Liu asks what the rector forgot in the office and he replies that in his report Chen Lai mentioned one amazing newcomer. So the rector driving past the university decided to look in to see this student who delighted so many people. He looks at Dean Liu Jianwu and Zhang Si and says that he has heard rumors that they almost fought over this student in the courtyard of the academy. It doesn't fit in any gate. The rector begins to tell them that how could they allow that one of the best students was assigned to the faculty of logistics. Since this has happened, then they could not disgrace themselves as students by behaving so infantile, because they are no longer children. The rector notes that this year there were so many talents at the faculty of logistics who took places in the top five, which is very surprising, or the whole point is that the combat faculty is no good now. Liu Jianwu, having heard the rector's words about his faculty, says that he will definitely take into account all the rector's remarks in working with students. But first, he asks to transfer Han Zai to the combat faculty. He promises that he will personally train him and monitor his development from day to day. Zhang Si, hearing this, also turns to the rector with a similar request. The rector says that time has passed and there is nothing to make such efforts to translate Han Zai. While in this case he will look into the eyes of curator Bai. After hearing these words, Bai asked for help. The rector approaches her and asks her where Han Zai is now. After all, he not only performed well at the test, but also helped more than two dozen students, as well as members of the security service, to escape. The rector wants to express his personal gratitude to him. Curator Bai, after listening to the rector, says that Han Zai should be in the training hall now, so the rector needs to wait a little while until the curator brings the student. The people working in the office, hearing that the rector wanted to express gratitude to Han Zai personally, pricked up their ears, because did the rector really appreciate Han Zai's contribution so highly? Liu Jianwu asks the rector why he is so interested in Han Zai. Is it really because by chance he was able to defeat a second-level crystal eater? One of the employees gets up and says that these are just rumors and nothing more. The contract beast of this guy is a simple past dog, so don't overestimate this student so much. And besides, according to other rumors, security officers helped him, because otherwise he would not have returned from there. After listening to all these versions, the rector thought that initially he also did not believe what was being said about Han Zai. But in his report Chen Lai assured that Han Zai not only killed the second-level Crystal Eater, but also made a significant contribution to the murder of the sectarian and his snake. The rector asks the dean if it is true that the contract animal is a small puppy. Liu says that this is indeed the case, 
so it is unlikely that Hanzai had at least a chance against a second-level mutant. Even students with magical beasts of rank are scattered at the appearance of the Crystal Eaters, who in their right mind would believe that a logistics student with an F-rank puppy is capable of such a thing. The rector, after listening to all this, got angry and menacingly asked where so many clever people came from in the office. Apart from discussing gossip and collecting rumors, they apparently do not do anything, who will work for them. He says he has heard enough and asks Curator Bai to take him to Hanzai. In the gym, Hanzai feeds Doggy and notices that after increasing the level, the dog's appetite has only increased, so there is almost no food left in the system for him. Hanzai strokes the puppy and says that so far he is broke, but when he is given a reward, the first thing Han will do is buy Doggy something delicious. There is a knock on the door of the gym and Hanzai asks to wait for those who are on the other side. He opens the door and the curator Bai and the rector of the academy, Mr. Song, appear behind it. She represents them to each other, and Hanzai thinks about what the rector might need from him. The young man bows to the rector in greeting. Song says that he is very surprised that after taking the first place, the first thing Hanzai did was not to celebrate the victory, but to train. Now it is clear what is the secret of Hanzai's success. Doggy barks in greeting. The rector pays attention to the cute puppy and thinks, it's amazing how Hanzai became the best with such a weak animal like this puppy. The rector says that the young man showed himself well on the test. So on behalf of the academy, Sun writes him an award. Hearing this, Hanzai asked, because the rector gives him a check for a million. You can exchange this check at any branch of the bank union. The guy says that the amount is so huge that it's already embarrassing to accept it. He takes the check, but the rector does not let him go. Who thinks that the guy has a strong grip, but there is hardly a million on the account of the academy, so cashing the check will be problematic for Han's eye. The rector clears his throat and says that if it is not possible to cash the check when entering the bank, then this is due to problems on the part of the bank. They have a system that has been messing up a lot lately, so if anything, the guy should try again. Hanzai understands that the rector is greedy, because he gave him a check that cannot be cashed. That's the whole reward of the young man. Sun also says that from now on, when using any paid infrastructure of the academy, the guy will have a 50% discount. Hanzai asks the rector if this is really all the reward that is due to him. Sun says that this was just an introductory test and he will have other opportunities in the future. If Hanzai can score 10,000 points in the next test, then not only will he be rewarded more generously, but he will also be allowed to move his family members to live in the center. When he heard that he would be allowed to move his family, the guy caught fire and said that he would try his best for this. Sun says that perhaps they will be able to replace Doggy with a more decent animal. This will also be a serious leap in development. Doggy is extremely unhappy with Sun's words, so he started barking furiously. Hanzai picks up Doggy and asks him not to swear. As he is about to leave, Rector Sun says that Hanzai needs to have a good rest today, because tomorrow there will be a test to determine the level. After the guests leave, so to speak, Hanzai returns to the room, which decides to check if there are any other ways to accelerate the growth of the pestle. He decides to also use the puppy care instructions. Doggy barks, demanding that Hanzai give him food first, and then stare at his book and generally try to cash his check. Hanzai puts on an Olympic jacket and tells Doggy that it's time to try out the gravity room. There are three types of training infrastructure available to students on the territory of the academy. Base training halls, gravity halls and combat halls. The basis is the basic halls, which are designed to develop the physical characteristics of students and their contract animals. By and large, it almost does not differ from the usual training centers. The next is the gravity hall, where you can adjust the force of gravity within the hall, which allows you to better develop strength and speed. Visiting such a hall is paid. You can only pay with glasses, but the glasses themselves are bought for money. And finally, the battle halls. Halls of this type are most often visited by teachers and the strongest students. In such halls, you can train at a higher level and hone special, specific necessary skills. Hanzai walks down the street heading towards the gravity hall and thinks that to use this hall, you need to spend either points or money. He decides that he will not spend the money yet. If he manages to cash the check that Rector Sun gave him, then he will buy food for Doggy with that money and send the rest home to his family. There, my sister needs money for her studies and for household expenses, that is, for the elementary purchase of food and everything like that. But the guy decides to sort out all the money issues tomorrow. After he passes the level determination test, the young man approaches the hall, where the rules for using the gravity hall are weighed at the entrance. He stops and starts studying the brochure. It says that students are allowed in this hall after confirming their identity. An hour of using the hall costs about 10 points, but you can also purchase points with cash by contacting the hall administrator. After reading this, Hanzai remembered that he had a 50% discount on attendance, and plus a lot of points, so he can take his time and enjoy the workout to his heart's content. 
entering the gym. Hanzai immediately drew attention to the exercise machines, which are unremarkable and look like an irregular gym. He goes to the wall where there is a button to increase gravity and tells Donkey that he will double gravity to begin with. Will increase gravity. Doggy and Hanzai can barely stand on their feet. At this time, in the student union, Tang Kaini, a young man with scars on the right side of his body and face, who is also a member of the student union, is discussing with Liai Jio, a red-haired girl, that it is better to give Wang Kain a place in the student union. Tan says that why spend a quota on a recommendation for a beginner who has a useless shepherd dog? Lai Jio complains that what does Tang Kain care about who she recommends? Does he really want to show in this way that he understands people better than she does? Or does he think that a newcomer from the Faculty of Logistics cannot be worthy of becoming a member of the student union? Tang Kaini says that he really thinks that Han Zai is unworthy of this place due to the fact that he is from the logistics faculty. Liai says that Han Zai scored 2,100 points during the entrance test and at the same time the idiot Tang considers him unworthy. At the same time, Fan Kaiyan with a disgusting character who is not able to admit his wrongness, is worthy. Tang Kaiyan says that Han Zai just turned on his wits, found an easy way to get points quickly, and this is not surprising. If Tan had been in his place, he would have scored no less points. Yang Gong, a red-haired young man who is also a member of the student union, intervenes in their dialogue. Yang Gong asks why Tang Kaiyan decided that Han Zai cheated. He says that Han Zai has shown exceptional results for a beginner, so it's silly to deny them. The question of Han Zai joining the student union will be decided after the test. The next day, students gather at the academy to take the test. The students are not very happy with this fact, because just a few days ago they returned from a trial in the dark. The guys complained to each other that some parts of the body still hurt, so they sincerely hope that they will not be given another check again, namely, a level check test. One guy asks the other what exactly will be tested on this test. He is told that the level determination test is a standard practice for beginners. If you pass this test well, then there is a chance to get into the student union. They begin to wonder who can get into the student union and Han Zai appears in front of them, from which they fall silent. After Han has passed by them, they continue their conversation. They say that of the newcomers, the strongest is most likely Han Zai. As they heard, the guy has already received an invitation to join the student union, but his beast does not inspire fear at all. Maybe he plans to compensate for this with physical development, like that legendary sophomore Hong Yuan, who does not come out of the rocking chair at all, as if he lives in it. Doggy, hearing their conversation, barks, but since Han Zai understands him, he understands about why he is barking. The puppy asks if Han Zai has heard that those guys behind them think that Hunt Zai is just a jock and he has nothing but muscles. Here a bus pulls up, on the roof of which is a huge white boar. The people who got off the bus are extremely dissatisfied with the fact that because of the usual testing of newcomers, they had to be taken away from their affairs and brought to the academy. Again, the director is delusional. The boar on the roof of the bus is trying to escape, but the guys who got off the bus without thinking for a second attack this boar, but they do not restrain their forces at all, so the bus and the buildings located near it can be damaged. And Zunai, a white-haired girl whose contract beast is a nine-tailed fox, tells the guy who attacked the boar to control his powers, because they are still in the academy. Hong Yuan, who is attacking a boar, awkwardly scratches his cheek and asks for his sister's forgiveness, and promises to be more careful. Newcomer students watching on this understand that this is the same Hong Yuan, a jock from the second year. They look different, not quite the way they imagined it. And in the beast on the roof, they recognize the azure boar of the third level. Seeing this boar, Doggy beamed, for this boar looks like the most delicious lunch for him, so he wants to run away. Han Zai catches him and holds him, telling him to be quiet and not run away. The door of the recluse hall falls, because it's like there was an explosion in it. Han Zai says that it seems that someone came out of the shutter in that direction. Was it really because of ordinary testing that even those who were in seclusion were told to interrupt their solitude? People who have come out of the shutter say that if it wasn't for the test, they could have stayed in seclusion for another six months. The old man who came out of the recluse hall, seeing the girls, talks about how beautiful and sexy the freshman is now. But the young man who came out with him tells him that these are second and third year students, and in general there is no need to be ashamed. The assistant rector says that all students and teachers came to the place on his instructions, including teachers who had gone into lockdown and students who were training outside the academy. The assistant wants to ask the rector why he gathered everyone, but the rector interrupts him and does not answer anything. Song recalls that if Chen Lai is right, then the sex spy is either among these people or Lai Bo is in the ranks of the combat brigade. First you need to make sure the academy is safe, and it would take too long to check each one individually. Song decides to check Han Zai first because the testimony of the young man and diverge from Chen Lai's report. 
and Zhu, Ziyuai and Han Zai are standing in front of the building where the testing is supposed to take place. Ziyuai asks about this building and Zhu tells him not to show Six Du that he knows nothing about the academy, because the combat faculty will laugh at them again. Han Zai asks the girl if she knows what exactly will be tested, and Zhu says that as they already know, the level of the contract beast is determined by innate data and acquired growth in the aggregate. The level determination test is aimed at identifying acquired growth. As the level of the contract beast increases, it becomes more and more its true appearance. Han Zai draws an analogy and comes to the conclusion that apparently this is the same when Doggy acquired the skill true appearance. The acquired growth is divided into nine steps. Each three stages correspond to the stages, birth, awakening, and deed. The stage of birth is the initial stage at which all animals are located and it is divided into three levels, wildness, agility, and greatness. Here Zhu notices a guy who intends to steal a doggy, because if he passes this test with this dog, he will definitely score many points. The girl says that people like this guy are at best at the initial stage of savagery. Hanzai stops the negligent thief and takes the dog from him. Curator Bai says that testing is starting, so all students must go inside the building. When the guys went inside the building, they noticed that the building seemed bigger from the outside, but inside it was small and cramped. Members of the student union watching the new students say that a lot of memories have come flooding back from the time of the savagery stage. Tang Kaini tells Yang Gong that he performed better on such a test, but over time Yang overtook him. Lai Jio says that at that time, their current vice chairman and actually set a new record, and in comparison with her, they were just non-entities. A red-haired girl asks about where and is just the same. Absolutely everyone was called to the same event. Then an appears and asks if she is being discussed. And Zunai approaches Liai Jio and hugs her, telling her that she missed her very much, because they haven't seen each other for a long time. And asks Yang Gong who is the best this year. The guy replies that one muddy weirdo became the best. Liai Jio points his finger at Han Zai and says it's him, a logistics student who scored 2,100 points on the entrance test. She also notes that she recommended him to be accepted into the student union. And Zunai says she has already heard about this guy, because her little sister was on the same team with him. The girl asks Yang Gong why he called the guy a muddy weirdo and he says that his contract animal is a shepherd dog of rank F, which causes disbelief in the eyes of Nzunai. Liai Jio says that the rector personally went to him to present the award and she starts waving to Han Zai, wishing him good luck. Han Zai notices the girl and the people standing next to her, making out that it looks like this whole company is members of the student union. He waves at them and thinks about how long they will stare at him for. Students are announced that testing is starting, so everyone needs to get ready. They are told that the test is very simple because they only need to hit the target with all their might, which is right on the stage in front of them. You need to beat using your best attacking technique. The test begins. The guy Yan Zing beats. His beast is a brown bear of rank B, the initial stage of wildness. The second is Zhang Yan, a pine frog of rank C, the initial stage of wildness. Ma Nao, a fighting rooster of rank C, the initial stage of savagery. Observing the students, Assistant Rector Suna says that this year there is a good selection of students because you can work with them. Next to the target comes Van Kai, whose beast is called a behemoth of rank A, the middle stage of savagery. His friends beamed, because everyone saw how the coolest student of the combat faculty can beat. Van Kine says that there is no one stronger than his behemoth. Students gather around Van and say that at least something interesting has finally happened. Otherwise before that everyone is as one at the initial stage of wildness. They ask him how it was possible to develop the beast in such a way three days after the conclusion of the contract. And Zunai asks Tang Kine if he recommended Wang Kine to join the student union. He says that it is so. Maybe this guy is not the most talented, but at least his beast is not a shepherd dog. And says that Commander Zio also mentioned one girl within a rank plant in Zhang Zion and is being called to the target next. Han Zai approaches Zhang Zion and tells her not to worry, because she will succeed. She approaches the target and uses her best attacking strike, which causes a lot of enthusiastic glances, because the plant is of the a rank and reaches the peak of wildness. Everyone is very surprised, because the girl turned out to be better than Van Kine. Yang Gong says that he will recommend taking Zhang Zion into their student union, because the girl is too cool and such a talent should not be missed, but in says that she should have thought earlier, because she was already staked out by Commander Zio from the university cell of the combat brigade, and Zunai thinks that a girl with her race is even more talented than she is with her snow fox. Chang Kaini says that he is ready to bet that no one will surpass this girl today. Lai Jio, hearing their enthusiastic words, says that Han Zai has not even beaten yet, how can she be so sure that no one will bypass her? Tan asks Liai if she is ready to make a bet with him and she agrees. They bet on one level 3 mutant crystal and say that and will be their witness. Tang Kaini turns around and leaves. He says that he went to the toilet and if something interesting happens, 
then let them tell him later. He leaves not at all in order to relieve himself, but in order to catch Han Zai and beat him so that he could not hit with hollow force and then Liai would not be able to win the bet. Han Zai heads to the aisle to the hall, because it's his turn soon and it's time for him to get ready. Dorogu is blocked by Tang, whom Han Zai asks who he is. Tang Kayane says they don't know each other, but the kid became part of his argument. Han Zai says he's not interested in this guy's arguments. He asks him to move, because he is standing in his way. Tang says Han Zai is too unfriendly. He says that if the guy helps him win the argument, then from now on he will protect Han Zai. Then no one will offend him at the academy and will not get tired. Han Zai seemed to fall for his words, brightening up and asked him if he really was the strongest and would be able to protect him. Tan says that it really is. But after that, Han Zai says that he will do it and he does not need any help. Tang Kaini is unhappy and says that the guy is a humorist because he bought it. But the trouble is he doesn't like jokers and swings for a punch. Han Zai also swings and they hit fist to fist. After which Tang realizes that the guy is damn good and strong. After that, Han Zai asks Tang Kain if he now needs protection in the person of Han. They are approached by Liai Jiao and Nzunai, who, seeing the guys, say that Tang forgot here if he went to the toilet. Tang, having got his bearings, hugs Han Zai and says that he met this brother along the way and decided to make friends with him. And Han Zai, in turn, says that brother Tang offered to take care of him. Tang Kain thinks about how long Han Zai will still be a defenseless lamb. And Han Zai thinks that Tang has muscles like King Kong and spirit like a marmalade. Han Zai turns around and says goodbye to the student union member, saying that it's time for him to take a test. When Han Zai's name is announced, everyone tenses up and prepares to look carefully at what will happen. Han Zai prepares and strikes with such force that the target breaks, and Rector Sun's jaw almost meets the floor due to shock. All the students look extremely surprised, because this has never happened before and Han Zai surpassed all records and how he could be at the level of dexterity. The man conducting the test barely pronounces the result, because the shepherd puppy of rank F is at the initial stage of dexterity. Rector Sun still can't come to his senses, but still gathers himself and turns to old Lai with a request to check the serviceability of the device. Everyone starts to hum and say that there are probably problems with the equipment, since even the teachers do not believe in this result and demand to replace the device. And Zunai says that Jio Jio recommended a real unique, if her memory serves her right. Then until today, the shortest period from signing the beast to the initial stage of dexterity was two weeks. Jio says that indeed the record was two weeks. Yang Gong says that the student they are talking about eventually became one of the best soldiers in the history of their stronghold city. At this time, Tang Kaini thinks about how lucky he was that he still realized in time the ratio of his strength and Han Zai's strength, because otherwise he would have been severely beaten. And then the realization hit him that he had just lost a level 3 beast crystal. Students and some teachers continue to discuss the broken device. Someone says that the device probably broke after that girl with the plant hit it, because her blow could well have affected the readings and further suitability. Rick Lee, who came up to the device and started checking it, says that everything is fine with the device and the result of Han's eye is correct. Hearing this, some students fell silent from disbelief. But Zhang Xionin says that Han's eye is the best and she always knew this and believed in him. But Wang Kain was very angry, because Han Zai's victory in this test was a kind of slap in the face for him, and Wang did not understand how Han Zai was able to check it. Wang Kain thinks that he will not leave it like this and will show the trash his place. Liai Jiao is joyful and says that she is announcing a meeting of the student union to decide on the admission of Han Zai to it, and also reminds Tang about the crystal so that he does not forget it. And, running out of the hall, thinks about whether he will be forced to pay for a broken device because he knows these academic cheapskates perfectly well. Doggy runs after Han Si and he asks him not to leave. Then old man Lai appears on the sidewalk, who says that he was already going to go look for Han Zai and, stopping, the guy dejectedly asks if he still has to pay for the damaged device. Lee says that they are not such cheapskates to force a guy to pay for a fight, because the initial stage of dexterity is the maximum that this model can withstand. Therefore, Lai was looking for him in order for Han Zai to pass another additional test. The words that the guy would not have to pay made him happy. Han Zai follows old man Lai, who leads him to a special test room where there is another model of a target, which the old man asks him to hit. Han Zai strikes and Lai stands in shock, because only five days after receiving the beast, he already has an average level of dexterity. Taking himself in hand, Lee coughed and said that it turns out that Doggy has weak innate skills, but an incredibly high ability to grow, at least at an early stage. Han Zai scratches the back of his head and says that apparently newcomers rarely demonstrate such progress. And old man Lai says that it is still an understatement and asks the young man if he is not getting too pale. Han Zai says that events in his life are developing rapidly and somehow he didn't even have time to study this issue in more detail. Old man Lee says he will try to briefly explain what's what. 
in their academy. The progress of most of the third and fourth year students stops at the initial stage of dexterity, and Hanzai has already surpassed them. After signing the beast, the contractors grow together with their beast. On average, contractors are three minus five times stronger physically than ordinary people who do not have animals. But at the same time, the main strength of the contractor lies in his beast. This is due to the fact that the limits of one's own body are limited and the contractor can be truly strong only if there is a developed beast. Among contract beasts of the same level, the one with the best innate data is usually stronger, but the chances of a less gifted beast can be increased by teaching it combat skills. After hearing this, Hanzai thinks that the formula that Lai told him about is suitable for ordinary contractors, and he has a system and a beast, the growth of which affects him in a tenfold size. Hanzai can go the other way, in his and Doggy's pair. It is the young man who can become the main fighting force. Hanzai asks old man Lai about his martial skills and asks him to tell him more about them. Lee says that combat skills help to further develop the beast, in addition to its inherent talents. The more combat skills a beast has, the higher its chances of surviving in battle. Skills can be obtained as a reward or simply by contacting your teacher. Many teachers have a set of unique combat skills that they have developed themselves, a kind of author's unique program. Lai also says that if Han Zai continues to develop at the same pace, it is quite possible that he will be chosen to defend the honor of their academy at a nationwide student competition, where the winner gets a golden award, as well as the opportunity to visit Forbidden Zones. Forbidden Zones are the most dangerous and scary places that are covered in mist, but it is there that you can find the most valuable resources. Han Zai thinks that in general, the scheme is clear to him. Just like in any RPG game from a past life, that is, the more difficult the quest, the more valuable the reward. He goes to the gravity room, where he simultaneously trains and checks the capabilities of the system. So far, all this system can do is store food for the dog and show the characteristics of Han Zai himself. He asks Doggy what else he can do besides tenfold recoil. Perhaps he has some hidden skills that the system does not know about. Doggy doesn't answer anything, except that he wants to eat. Hanzai considers this a negative answer about awareness of martial skills, so he says he will ask by his supervisor about it. The guy is used to double gravity, so he wants to check triple gravity. A man appears behind him, whom Hanzai immediately senses and attacks, but his hand is stopped and told that he has a good reaction. The young man does not understand how this uninvited guest entered the hall, why even Doggy did not warn about him and how he manages to stay so fast with triple gravity. The person asks how Han Zai was able to achieve the middle stage of dexterity, but Han Zai does not answer the question, but asks the counter about who this person is. The man grins and Han Zai loses sight of him, because he attacks from below, hitting the guy in the solar plexus, causing pain. He throws Han Zai up to the ceiling and disappears from the guy's sight, appearing from above, and striking the young man's back with his fist, causing him to fall to the floor with a terrible crash. The man says that the guy's body can withstand a lot, but he definitely lacks combat experience. He does not understand how with such data he could take first place in the test. Doggy runs forward, barking furiously and covering his master with his little body. The man began to be annoyed by the dog's barking, so he demands that he be silent. Hanzai pulls the puppy to him and asks him not to be nervous, because he will deal with this guest himself. The attacker turns out to be the rector, who is puzzled that a shepherd dog of rank F was able to resist under his pressure. Hanzai smiles and, addressing the rector, asks him if he really has no other business but to beat up students. Rector's son tells the guy that if he does not turn on at full power, then he can kill him. The system announces to Hanzai that a deadly threat has been detected and the true appearance skill needs to be activated. Hanzai mentally asks the system if this skill can be activated without changing the size of the pixel, but with an increase in all indicators, to which the system responds that it is possible to try such a variation and Hanzai asks to activate the skill. The system announces that the skill has been applied, but at the request of the host, the size of the beast remains unchanged. Song looks at the guy and feels the pressure that he exudes and thinks that now Han Zai looks more like the person described by the security service. Han Zai attacks Song and begins to violently deliver chaotic punches. His strength and speed have increased significantly, but this is still not enough to defeat the rector. The rector strikes the guy's chest, which causes him to bleed from his mouth, but Han Zai sees this blow as a good opportunity, so he grabs Sun by the hand and says that he got caught, strikes him with the other hand of the right side. The rector says that this is not according to the rules and blocks the blow by flying away. Han Zai thinks that this time he finally delivered a crushing blow and managed to defeat Sun, but the rector appears behind the guy and hits him. Han Zai says that the rector has a heavy hand. And Sun says that they have been pampered and enough is enough. Han Zai asks what it was, was he being tested again? Sun says that they are still trying to figure out the causes of the incident during the test, since only the academy staff and members of the combat brigades knew the place of the test. 
The young man asks that they suspect that there is a spy sect in the academy and for some reason he became the main suspect. The rector says that Han Zai is the main suspect, because in his report he said that he dispersed the crystal eaters of the second level, but did not mention the fight with a member of the sect. Han Zai begins to scold the rector and says that he could just ask the guy everything that interests him, and not attack suddenly. But Sun says only that next time the guy will know what will happen to him if he is dishonest in his testimony again. The rector says that now he is convinced that the young man could really defeat a member of the sect and his snake, which means that the guy will have to explain in detail what happened that day. Han Zai tells everything and Sun, amazed by the story, says that it is unusual for a member of the sect to purposefully come for a guy. It's possible that their sect has their eye on Doggy. The young man tells the rector that Chen Lai didn't tell him anything about the sect last time, so he asks Rector Song to tell him everything. Sun says that the sect of the collapse of the world arose after the world was covered by a thick mist, by whom it was founded and where exactly no one knows. The sect professes the idea of a natural collapse of the world. Their followers are just a bunch of crazy fanatics. Ten years ago they went to war with the combat brigades. After a series of large-scale battles, the combined army of the battle brigades defeated the sect at the cost of the loss of three strongholds. Since then, they have disappeared without a trace. Therefore, the appearance of sectarians at the trial was an extremely unexpected event, for which no one was ready. After listening to the rector, Han Zai asks the main question that interests him, why did he get them? Song says that he does not understand the sectarians and what is going on in their heads, so he will not be able to give an unambiguous answer. But the fact of opening a hunt for Han Zai is now not only his problem, but also the problem of the academy as a whole, because they are responsible for the safety of the academy. The only thing that Rector Song can advise Han Zai is to study harder and keep an eye out. The current progress of the young man is not enough for sorties into the darkness or victory in the national student competition. Han Zai asks Song how strong the participants of these competitions are and the rector says that they are very strong. Han Zai may be the best among the newcomers of their academy, but this is still not enough to become the best among the best. The strength of students is strongly related to the value of resources near their main cities. The higher the danger level of the mist, the higher the level of students. The city where the rector, Han Zai and other students of the academy live is far from the most dangerous. After listening to the rector, Han Zai smiles and asks Song if he is entitled to a reward due to the fact that his test results are the best. Sun, dissatisfied with such a question, says that he is not a shaggy sheep that can be sheared. And he also thinks that he still needs to think about where to get the money so that Han Zai can cash the check that has already been issued. Han Zai says, and who else should he cut, in the language of the rector, if just the same song as the shaggiest here? The rector says that Han Zai is too selfish, but he is not even shy about this fact. But the guy says that the rector said that he needed to become stronger, but visiting the gravity hall is not free, so money will not be superfluous. Song gives the guy a new combat skill as a reward for testing and disappears while Han Zai studies the brochure given to him. The departed rector thinks aloud about whether Han Zai will spread rumors that he fought with him almost on equal terms because in that case Sun will have to kill the kid. He also thinks about why he decided to go to the guy, because the price was the most valuable book with a combat skill, and this is not a small loss. Han Zai calls the system window in order to integrate a new combat skill. The system notifies him that the activation of the combat skill provided by the host has begun. Due to the fact that Han Zai downloads a new combat skill, he gets access to the internal section where there is a general store, a skill store, equipment and attributes. The host, who is Han Zai, can now find out the details of the downloaded combat skill. The combat skill is called Battle Roar. This skill is based on combat waves and now the guy has become interested in whether the rector has many more similar books. Han Zai cashes in on the master icon and Doggy masters the skill, which the system notifies him about. Having a system, mastering the skill happens instantly. Without it, we would have to teach the dog step by step according to the instructions provided in the book. Then it comes to Han's eye. Since a martial skills store has opened for him, then he can just buy them. But everything turns out to be not so simple. Because the cost of skills exceeds 10 million, these are extremely insane prices. Han's eye asks the system how he can get points to buy combat skills. He is told that points can be obtained by exploring the mist and killing mutants. The system starts counting points only after unlocking the store and Han Zai says that the system is terribly greedy. After all, all he got from her was a little glutton and food for only three days for him, but Doggy does not understand what claims can be made to him because he is an ordinary dog. The young man tells the system that if she doesn't start behaving normally, he will order Doggy to devour her. The system notifies him that the host is unfair. After opening most of the system's functions, the system provides synchronous pumping of characteristics and mastering of combat skills. Under normal circumstances, a combat skill mastered by a beast remains only with the beast. 
But thanks to the synchronization function, after the beast has mastered this combat skill, it is also available for use by the host itself. The system shows the features of Doggy. The dog has 100% loyalty and tenfold return. The more he eats, the stronger he gets. After mastering the combat skill by the beast and completing synchronization, the same skill can be used by the host. Hanzai says the system has started to work better. The young man is now thinking about where to go to test a new combat skill and decides tomorrow to ask this question to the Bai curator so that she can consult him, and maybe at the same time it will be possible to extract some skill from her. In the morning, Hanzai meets Nzunai and Liai Jio in the corridor, who greet him with a smile and greet him. They say they were waiting for a young man. Jio Jio says that she forgot to introduce a beautiful girl, which is Nzunai. Liai says that she is the vice chairman of the student union. Han Zai, hearing the name in Zunai, realizes that she is most likely a relative of his classmate. Liai Jio says they came for him to officially invite the guy to join the student union. He performed well on the entrance test and on the test. In this regard, as vice chairman in Zunai, invites him to join the student union. Up to this point, and Zunai was very worried about the meeting with Han Zai, because today they have to assign him to the student union. Han Zai says joining the student union is great, but is there a fee in the student union? free meals, or other social benefits. Hearing this, Liai Jiang faces and thinks that Han Zai is invited to the student union by the deputy chairman herself, and the guy, in turn, thinks only about buns. Why is there so much arrogance in this guy, although he has achieved nothing? And Zunai says that the student union does have a salary and food. After joining the student union, he will understand that the salary is secondary. The main thing is that he will have access to all the best in the academy. He will also be able to apply for the study of the mist. Han Zai lights up and smilingly asks about the prospects for salary growth and Lai Jio says that they will pay him at double the rate and asks if Han Zai agrees to such conditions. And the guy agrees, and Zunai approaches Han Zai, handing him a document to fill out. While Pa Ren is filling out this form, the girls are squatting and stroking Doggy, being touched by how cute he is. Jio Jio takes the puppy's hands and he lies down on her bust, enjoying the soft bones and comfort. Han Zai, noticing how Doggy behaves, says that he is a petty pervert and takes the dog out of the girl's hands. The young man gives the completed form to Nzunai. Nzunai says that tomorrow the guy has to come to the student union for a badge. Then they complete a couple more formal procedures and that's it. And she also thanks Han Zai for taking care of her little sister. Han Zai goes to a lecture, where curator Bai talks about the theoretical part of the lesson. She says that all the guys have already passed the entrance test and the level determination test and now it's time for them to get used to the student routine. The main tasks of any contractor is to pump your beast and become stronger yourself. To do this, contract animals must always be in good shape. Han Zai thinks that he always tries to keep Doggy in good shape. Bai continues the lecture and says that they have prepared a lot of tasks for each of the group. All tasks for beginners will take place in the city center. Basically, these tasks are related to intelligence activities. One of the students asks the Bai curator a question about whether they will be sent to more dangerous places after they complete all the tasks. But all the other students begin to say that there are unlikely to be serious tasks in the center. The most they will do is to transfer old ladies across the street. Having heard that the guys are not serious about the central part, he says that the center is much more dangerous than they think. There are hunters for contract animals and other criminals who are not low risk. Students will not be able to cope with each of them. Han Zai remembers the day when he met one of these hunters and thinks that these hunters are not so terrible. Curator Bai notices that Han Zai listens to her inattentively and throws a piece of chalk at him, telling him that if he does not want to die on a mission, then everyone must listen to her carefully and not wander in the clouds. She says they lost 20 newcomers last year. Whatever the level of danger of the task, you need to take them seriously and not think that they are fenced off from the clutches of death. The real world is full of cruelty and students should be prepared for it. The priority task during the task is to stay alive. Curator Bai says that now the guys need to be divided into teams of three and choose tasks for themselves. Students begin to surround Han Zai from all sides and invite him to their group or they want to be in a group with him, but the guy refuses and says that he already has a team in which he is comfortable working. ZY smiles and says that it is better to work with proven fighters in whom you can be sure. The three of them approach the table where the task brochures are lying. There are only three tasks on the table. One task, to escort the cargo. The complexity of this task is low. It is necessary to escort the cargo with high-quality raw materials to the laboratory. Among the convoy accompanying this raw material, there will also be members of the combat brigade. Three commands are required to complete this task. Task 2. Find the product. The difficulty of the task is average. A shipment of goods was stolen from Xiao's sales agent, so it needs to be found and returned to the owner. Task 3. Catch the beast. The complexity of the task is high. 
according to reports from the periphery. One of the contract animals got rabies and therefore began to attack ordinary people. The condition of the beast was transmitted to its owner. The team is required to capture the beast and its counter Taurus, if necessary, to neutralize it. Zui asks Han Zai what task they will choose. But Han Zai reflects that all these tasks are quite simple and the reward for completing them is a penny. Therefore, you need to choose the one for which he will get more points from the system. Han Zai asks the system if he can get points for killing the contract beast and its owner. To which the system responds in the affirmative and Han Zai tells the guys that they will take task number 3. Curator Bai says that at the Faculty of Logistics, they are probably the only ones who can do this task. But Bai should remind them to act in proportion to their strength, without trying to somehow stand out and get into trouble. She gives additional materials for each task and asks the guys to be careful. After completing the task, their work will be evaluated taking into account the accuracy of execution and complexity. Those who receive high marks will be given the opportunity to go to the study of the mist together with the student staff. Students say that it doesn't look like a reward, because it's extremely dangerous in the dark, and they almost died on the entrance exam anyway. Bai says that you can get a lot of points for exploring the mist, and they themselves understand what points can be spent on at the academy. Moreover, they will go to the mist in the company of the student union, which already guarantees a certain level of security. They will have the opportunity to get the crystals of high-level beasts, which are very highly valued inside the reference city. And also, only there you can find valuable resources with which you can pump your environment or means of protection. With a skillful approach, they can equip themselves with not the same students of the combat faculty. This is the end of Curator Bai's lecture. She says that there will be no classes after lunch. They need to have a good rest in order to start performing tasks tomorrow. And Zhu approaches Han Zai and says that after lunch they are going to study the materials for the assignment. After all, it is difficult for them. Han Zai says it's a good idea, but he won't be able to join them because he needs to see the curator Bai, he has business with her. The young man approaches Bai's supervisor and says that he wanted to ask her a couple of questions about combat skills. She says she will listen to him, but first let him help her carry a stack of papers to the teacher's room. Bai says that she will change her clothes and wait for him in the training room. Doggy and Han Zai are training in the gym and the system notifies that the Furious Roar skill has been mastered. Synchronization with the host has reached 100%. Han Zai says that synchronization is rather slow, but maybe in real combat all this will happen much faster. Curator Bai walks into the hall and tells Han Zai that she brought him combat skills. The guy is happy to say that she is too generous and a couple of receptions would be enough for him. Bai says that if so, then she will show and teach him just a couple of techniques, although initially she wanted to give him two skills to choose. And Han Zai, smiling awkwardly, tells her to forget his words and that he has a HWA tit and a couple of techniques. Curator Bai says that to begin with, the young man should start training in an arbitrary bench press. She asks to show everything he is capable of. And she, in turn, will analyze his movements and select the most suitable skills for him. Han Zai tells Bai to watch his training carefully. Curator Bai sits on the sofa, folds her hands in hopes that the guy will not disappoint her. Han Zai begins to train and Bai already notices his mistakes. For a start he has strong but very clumsy punches, but at the same time he combines attacks. The woman stops Han Zai and says that his combinations are completely haphazard, so only hooligans fight in doorways, so half of his strength goes nowhere. She says that now she is showing by her example how it is necessary. He stands in front of Han Zai, swings his foot and hits the air, which is cut by a dartboard standing behind Han Zai, hitting the wall as well. The guy runs up to Bai and asks to teach him as well. She says that he is still far from such speed and accuracy of blows as hers. But on the other hand, he will be able to carry out joint attacks with his beast as she does. Most contractors teach skills to their animals, but they do not master these skills themselves. Most of the time they direct the beast, while they themselves watch from the side and those who manage to work in conjunction with their beast have a great advantage over them. Han Zai thinks that taking into account the system and the three features of Doggy, the guy will have an advantage in front of the curator of the fight itself. The woman gives him a new combat skill called Mimicry. He selects techniques for the beast taking into account its characteristics. The guy clicks on the master button, which appeared in the system window. Bai keeps saying that at least take her. So she taught her beast this skill. After a while she began to discover techniques in herself that she could not master herself before. The system notifies that the combat skill Mimicry has been mastered. Taking into account the specifics of the skill, the contact beast has also mastered the following technique, namely, the devil's mouth. Curator Bai says that while Han Zai is at the most basic level and is unlikely to notice any changes, because it should take some time before he. Curator Bai does not have time to finish, because Han Zai uses the skill and attacks the target no worse than Bai herself. The guy grins and says that he seems to have done well. 
Curator Bai looks at the guy with disbelief and thinks that this kid is a monster. She says that the skill is mastered by the contractor only after practicing joint attacks with the beast. She sits down on a chair and, hunched over, sadly says that at one time it took her a little more than a month. She says that she was going to spend a couple of weeks to slowly bring Hanzai to new knowledge, to new combat skills, but apparently there is no need for this, and she gives him all the fighting skills. Han Eleven says that he is very grateful to the curator Bai, and she leaves the hall shocked and dejected, saying that the guy should study and she should go home because he does not need her here. But Hanzai returns the woman, because since she has already come, she can work out with him a little. Bai beamed and thought about the fact that she hadn't even shown him even basic evasion techniques. She's thinking about kicking his ass so that he doesn't get proud before the time. The curator says that since the guy asks so much, then she will stay and practice with him. The beast of curator Bai is a semi-lunar Capricorn, a huge animal similar to a goat, but more massive and standing on two paws. She asks Han Zai if he is ready and he gets into position. Their training begins. The next day, the young man goes to the square, where his comrades are waiting for him. He apologizes for the delay and says that yesterday he was a little exhausted in training. That's why he overslept today. Zui says that Zai seems to be addicted to training, because even before completing a task, the gym does not miss, and Zhu says it's time for them to move out. And Curator Bai is still not there. She was going to give them one last instruction before the road. Han Zai does not recognize and Zhu and jumps off who she is and the girl, confused, asks if he is okay, because he scares her. Han Zai apologizes to Zhu and says he just didn't get enough sleep. And the curator Bai feels bad, so you don't have to wait for her and moves forward immediately. And Zhu tells Han Zai that yesterday afternoon they studied the materials of the assignment in detail. They were waiting for the guy to join them, but this, unfortunately, did not happen. Zhu Y asks why Brother Han stood them up yesterday. Han Zai scratches the back of his head and says that he just wanted to pump up a little before going to the back to be at least a little ready, but in the end he got too carried away. Zhu smiles and says that she knew he had left to train, so they will bring him up to date at the cafe. Sitting in a cafe, the trio examines the materials of the assignment, where there are many photos of victims of animal attacks and the contractor. And Zhu says that this little contract animal appears in some photos, so most likely this is their goal. Zhu Y is amazed at how a girl can drink coffee while looking at photos of the dead and injured. Han Zai says that the animal looks like a rat. At the same time, a young man is lying in the sewer, who shudders in a terrible fit and calms down a second later. A little rat runs up to him, who is huddling up to his Hazia Inn. The guy apologizes to the animal and asks him to apologize for scaring him again. The intervals between his seizures are getting shorter. In this state, this young man is collecting all the ingredients, so he urgently needs to beg for an antidote. The guy strokes the rat and asks her not to be afraid for him, because everything is fine with him. If it weren't for the rats, he wouldn't be able to do anything. The young man gets to his feet, takes the animal, a bag of ingredients that he was able to collect and goes to the door, located deep in the sewer. The person who is in the laboratory asks the guy who came why he came back so quickly, did he really find everything he needed? The young man hysterically says that he brought almost everything he asked for, but his seizures happen too often and he can't do it anymore. The man in the hoodie says angrily that the young man is pathetic. Does he really think that he will recommend such a scum as this pathetic Pa Ren to accept him into the sack? The young man begins to ask for help, but he is rudely shut up and told to go look for the rest of the ingredients and not to bother his eyes in the laboratory, annoying with his presence. He gives him some ampoule and tells him to get lost. The young man takes the ampoule and says, disappointed, that he will now go on an errand. Han Zai and his comrades are still sitting in the cafe studying the materials. In the same institution, a girl is invited, whose animal is grass. She raises her hand intending to say hello to the guy, but abruptly changes her mind, thinking that the guy is busy and she does not want to distract him. Zhu Y asks Zai how long they will sit in this cafe and sour here, and Zhu replies to him that didn't Y hear what curator Bai was saying. It can be very dangerous on missions, so if there is a serious threat, and Zhu will not save him. The guy says that he does not need her help, because he has a brother Han Zai, but he can put anyone down. Zhu says that Y is probably going to hide behind Han Zai all his life, isn't he planning to develop himself? Han Zai, who has been studying the materials all this time, says that it seems that the picture is taking shape. First, two people were killed by a beast that was already susceptible to rabies. The claw marks of small animals are visible on the bodies of the dead and injured. Secondly, the pictures show that the houses of the victims were robbed. They took everything in a row, indiscriminately. Since this happened in the periphery, it is impossible to be sure that it was a murder for the purpose of robbery or other robbers got into the house after the murder. The first thing Han Zai suggests is to inspect the victims' homes themselves. Zhu Y asks Zai if this is a good idea. It seems to him that such tasks are more suitable for combat brigades. 
and Zhu says that they already have few people. The ranks of combat brigades are thinning with each sortie. Now they barely have enough personnel to restrain the defense. If they had had time for this task, they would not have given it to the students. Han Zai smiles and says that then they will become a mini combat brigade themselves. He suggests dividing the duties between each other so that it will be easier for them. And Zhu says she will provide logistics. After raising the level of her fawn will cope with this better than anyone. Han Zai will be the main fighting force, and Zhu Wai will do investigative work, which does not please Wai too much and he expresses indignation, but Han Zai says not to despair, because his role is important. At the exit from the cafe, Han Zai runs into Wang Kayan and the second one says that the glorious trinity of the logistics faculty, a dog, a deer and a goose, got in his way. On the road, Han Zai is Kayan's friend, whom the young man pushes aside and asks not to block the passage. And this makes Wang Kayan very angry, because his joke was ignored by Zai and his friends. Wang Kayan thinks that if it weren't for Han Zai's peculiar puppy, but he would have already been able to lick Kayan. Ziu Wai tells Wang Kai that the beast is only in the middle stage of savagery. He's no match for Han Zai, so he doesn't understand why he has so much conceit. Wang Kayan's friend suggests that he teach these three a lesson before completing the task, because what do they allow themselves? But these words make brother Wang angry. He grabs his friend and furiously asks what he plans to do, because the Han Zai puppy is at the initial stage of dexterity. Another friend tries to smooth over the situation and says that it is not necessary to go into a head-on collision. You can stir up something when they do the task. Wang says it's a good idea, because they study together and need to help each other. Zhang Zai Onan appears behind Kayan and his friends and says that she heard what they were saying here. She tells them not to mess with Han Zai and his team. Wang Kayan asks her why she stands up for Han Zai if she is studying at the martial faculty. Wang Kayan's friends say that they discussed helping Han Zai, so let her calm down and sit down. Zai Onan uses force because she is evil, but before she leaves, she says that it would be better for them if they really help them. After leaving, Kayan's friends say that Zhang Zai Onan is hot. They turn to Wang Kayan, who looks more gloomy than a cloud. They ask him what's wrong with him, but he pointedly replies that Han Zai is a corpse and his days are numbered. 